If you get in on the example questions for the previous lesson, we talked a little bit about the inverse trigonometric ratios and how we use those to solve for specific angles rather than just specific sides of a triangle. One of the things you may end up having to do um, off and on in one of your math classes is uh, what's called solving a right triangle. And to solve a right triangle, you have to find all of the, uh, all the dimensions of the triangle, all three sides and all three angles. So uh, what I want to work on here is those inverse ratios and see how they apply to finding missing angles. Now, uh, based on what we've done a couple lessons ago, we should be able to find the sine of x relatively easily. We know that sine, based on our, our SOCA TOA, SOCA TOA, uh, if we call our missing side here x, well, better not because we already have an x. Let's call that one y. Sorry about that. Okay, so the sine of x degrees would be opposite over hypotenuse. Sine opposite over hypotenuse. So that would be y over 14. And then if we want to find the cosine of x, it would be adjacent over hypotenuse. Cosine adjacent hypotenuse. So the adjacent to the x degrees would be 7. So it would be 7 fourteenths or 0.5, 1 half, right? And then if we wanted to find the tangent, of x, sorry about that, put the zero on the wrong spot. If we want to find the tangent of x degrees, tangent is opposite over adjacent, so we'd have y over 7. That would be y over 7. There we go. Now the inverse trigonometric ratios are just these ratios upside down. If sine is opposite over hypotenuse, then the inverse sine sine to the negative 1 is how we write that, would just be hypotenuse over opposite. So it's just upside down, right? So that means that the inverse sine for the same triangle for x degrees would be 14 over y, and the inverse cosine would be 14 over 7, or 2, and the inverse tangent would just be 7 over y. So pretty straightforward, really. But the reason we want to use these is when you are looking for a specific angle measure, the inverse sign is what you need to be able to type into a calculator. For instance, we just discovered here that the cosine of our x degrees is 0.5. But that doesn't tell us what the degree is. It just tells us what the cosine is. Then so we have to look it up on a table to find out what angle goes with 0.5, right? That doesn't help us at all. So what we want to do then is use the inverse, co uh, the, the inverse cosine, cosine to the negative 1. And if we punch 0.5 into our calculator and then calculate the inverse sine of it, so we put 0.5 and we use the shift key. You notice that cosine right now is just COS. We use the shift key and now it's COS to the negative 1. If I punch that in, I get 60. And 60 degrees is the actual angle measure down here of this angle, 60 degrees. If I punch in just the cosine of 0.5, clear 0.5 cosine, I get basically 1. That doesn't help us at all. That's not the angle measure at all. So using the inverse sine is how we actually find a missing degree measure when we know the sine, cosine, or tangent. We take whatever that measure is, whatever that value is, and then multiply it by the inverse of whatever ratio we're using. So if we find the cosine 0.5 of our degree measure, we use the inverse cosine to find it. If we find the uh, tangent of a specific degree measure and we want that degree measure, we use the inverse tangent to find it. And all you have to do to remember those things is just use SOHCAHTOA and then swap everything around. Sine is, or, uh, inverse sine is hypotenuse over opposite, uh, inverse cosine is hypotenuse over adjacent, and inverse tangent is adjacent over opposite. Really not nearly as complex as it sounds. So let's go through a few examples of this. I think that will help clear it up.